All right, you're going to be working on laying out your clock that you're going to eventually end up making onto your lumber. Now I'm going to show you how to lay this out on the lumber, but first I want to point out that you're going to have a few options. One, you're going to have the option of a different style clock face. So right here you have an example of an angled clock face. You're also going to have the option to make a round top clock face, or you can have just a traditional square, but you're going to decide that when you're laying this out, making your measurements. So once again, you might have square, you might have an angled, or you might have round, and you're going to make that decision as we lay it out, and then I'll show you how to measure and mark that out. One of the other things to keep in mind, when you do go to build your clock, this piece is going to get glued together, the part that holds your phone in place, and it's going to be up to you whether you want that on the left, whether you want it on the right, whether you want it a little bit angled, and then the clock face angled, that's going to be completely your decision. Okay? So you might see different ones, different layouts, that's going to be a judgment call that you make. But the measurements for making these pieces are all going to be the same. I'm also going to teach you to make an X or right no in places that you don't need to sand to make your life easy. But so to do this, what you're going to get is a few items. You're going to need your ruler that matches your station number. And once again, you got that on your computer. You're going to find your ruler that you need. You're going to need what's called your framing square. And you might need your compass if you decide to make it a round top. Okay? But what's going to happen is your instructor is going to give you three blocks of wood. You're going to have these two pieces, which eventually will become your clock holder. You're going to have a larger piece that's going to become your clock face and your clock base. Okay? So, we're going to start with the simple one, which is the clock face and face. So, this block of wood should be, and if I look at my ruler, you're going to see you have little in inches on one side, millimeters on the other. I'm on the inch side, so the one that says 1 through 12. And you're going to see you got these little lines that represent, according to my ruler, if I look right here, it says a sixteenth of an inch. So right here has a sixteenth of an inch, so I got one sixteenth, or sixteen little lines in every inch. But if I lay my ruler down with the zero on the end, you're going to see your block should be right around five and a half. Sometimes it might be one sixteenth past five and a half. But you're going to want to double check whatever that measurement is. So like on this one, it's five and a half. It's actually five and what would be uh, nine sixteenths. So I want to make it a square, so I'm going to come over and towards the top or bottom of my lumber. I'm going to line up my ruler on the edge. I'm going to take a nice sharp pencil, preferably not a pen. And if you need to, you can always borrow one of my colored pencils. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come over five and a half. This one was a little past, so I'm going to go one sixteenth past. If yours is five and a half, you're going to make it five and a half. But I'm making it square so that it doesn't matter which direction it goes. I'm then going to use the square and I'm going to use this right 90 degree corner. And so I have this pushed right up against the block. I bring that in to the square. So I have it right up to the line. And then I simply draw my line straight across. Nice and dark. Now, we want to leave this line on. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to make one more mark. And we're going to go 1 16th of an inch past that line and we're going to make another little mark. And I'm going to do that exact same thing. And I'm going to show you what we're creating here. But once again I bring that up right to the pencil line. And I draw that line straight across. And you'll see it creates 
this little road, right? So you have two lines on either side and then the road going down the middle. That road down the middle is what we're going to try to cut when we cut this. And we want to leave the line on both the base and the, the clock face so that way we can go back and we can use the electric sander to make it nice and straight if we don't do a perfect cut. Now if I wanted, you could also take another colored pencil of a different color, line your mark right up in the center, and you can always color that road in by coming back with my colored pencil and draw a straight line right through the center of that road. And now you can see I have a little green line that I'm going to cut right down. So you can do the colored pencil so you can see it a little better or you can just leave the gap, it's up to you. But so I have my clock face and I have my clock base. There's one other part that I need to do for the clock face and that is I need to find the center of this. To find the center of it, all I simply have to do is put my ruler on this inside corner and then bring it to this corner down in the bottom. So I'm touching this corner and this corner. I then go and kind of eyeball the center and I make about a one inch line in the center. So when I take it off, you can see there's a little angled line going corner to corner. I'm then going to do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to line up the ruler right on that corner, right down on that bottom edge and sometimes it helps to have a partner kind of hold it if you want. But I'm going to go ahead and once again draw a line through the middle, making an X. So I have my five and a half or five and nine sixteenths, depending on what my measurements tell me, because sometimes this block might be a little wider than another one. So I check the width, make it match this way. Then I draw one sixteenth of an inch over, and then I find that little road that I'm gonna cut straight down. I then went corner to corner to find the center corner to corner to find the center, making an X, so I know exactly where I need to drill. Now, if I'm doing a square clock face, I'm all done with this piece. If I'm doing a angled one, or a round one, this is where I'm going to show you how to make either round or angle. Now, to make the angle, you are going to need your square, and if you look, you can see where it's kind of marked on here, okay, and so I'm just making sure I have the right measurements. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the square for this one, and on the same side that I made that X, I'm going to come in and right up against this edge, you can see where it says one inch, one and a half inches. I'm going to make a straight little mark right on the end at one and a half inches. I'm going to actually move it to the bottom and I simply bring it out just like I did when I was making that X through the center to the mark. Once I have it to the mark, I'm going to draw that line straight down, making it nice and dark like such. I'm then going to come back to where I made my road and I'm going to go one and a half inches, make a little mark so I know where that's at. I then want to make the angle go this way, so I'm going to flip it around, put it on the bottom so it's angling up, bring it right even with that mark, holding it flush against the bottom. I go ahead and I draw the other side. So if I'm making <coughs> the angles, I'm going to go like that. Now if I want to create the road once again, I'm simply going to come out to the edge and I'm going to make a mark one line up on both sides. So rather than an inch and a half down, I'm simply going what would be one, on this one it's an eighth but it'll be okay, above it. And then I simply go back to that line and I can make a little groove once again. So if I want to have a groove or road, 
for the bandsaw to go down, I come in, but I can come back and I can make that road on the two sides. Now, if you decided you're going to make a rounded top, you're going to need what is called a compass to do that. Once again, you'll notice this one's got a number on it, two numbers for one four, because I'm in station 14 right now. This is the radius of your circle. What you're going to end up doing is you're going to put this right on that center X mark that we made, and then you're going to go ahead and unloosen this thread or this wheel till it hits the top. Once it gets to that top edge, you're going to use the compass to spin. Now it might not make it all the way to the edge. If it doesn't, you can come check with your instructor. We can see what we need to do, but it should come awfully close where we'll be able to sand it even. But it should come all the way over to my road. And notice I'm just spinning it. It's got a very nice sharp point right around that center X. And when I do, it's going to make a nice tight curve. And mine's coming nice and perfectly since we centered it from edge to edge. But it's going to create a nice curve. Now the bandsaw cannot cut this curve. So we have to add a couple lines that we're going to cut. And so once again, we're going to come back to this square. And I'm going to draw these in green just so I have a contrast so you can see a little bit better. But what I want to end up doing is I'm going to come back somewhat close, kind of creating a road once again, and then it's going to have a little bit of a big curve to it. Off to the side, these are what are called relief cuts so that we can cut close to it and then come back and use the electric sander to sand that down. So I have one piece that's cut out here, another second piece that's getting cut out over here. Now these are still a little big to sand, so I might come back with my ruler and go just a little bit above that line and I'm going to draw another little straight line that I'm going to end up cutting after I cut out that piece that's marked number two and then I'm going to have a little straight line right here. And I'm going to do the same thing over to this side and then I'm going to hold it up so hopefully you can see on the camera. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. But you will not be allowed to go cut on the bandsaw until your instructor sees that you have everything marked correctly. So you'll notice I have these little green lines once again creating a little roadway and they're straight roads that get cut. So I'm going to cut this number one, then I'll come back and cut this little tiny triangle, this little tiny triangle, but it keeps my finger safe. And then I have minimal time to go back to the sander and I don't make such a huge mess sanding this round. But so you've been shown now how to make it round, angled, or square, right? Depending on which one you chose. That's how you're going to lay out this piece with you and your partner. After we have our face and our base all laid out, you're going to be working on laying out the part that's going to actually hold your phone, your iPad, whatever it might be, Kindle, right, in place. Now that's two blocks that we're going to end up marking, right? Now I have these as kind of reminders for me so I can help you show you how to mark these. These two are going to be awfully close to the exact same length. They don't have to be perfect. They're going to be close though. Once again, I'm going to want my ruler and I'm going to want my square for my station. And I'm going to need either probably two colored pencils or a pencil and a colored pencil so I can make my roadway and to know where I'm going to cut. Now, I'm also going to come back and I'm going to mark where I don't need to sand because we want to try to make this as efficient of a process as possible. Now, this one wasn't sanded the best because we didn't have a great amount of time when I was doing this first example one. We're going to do a much better job than what we have on that one. But we're going to end up making marks very similar on both of these because you're going to have two pieces that are the exact same length, one just a wider one and a smaller one. And then I have little leftover pieces, once again, that should be the same width on both sides. 
So make sure when we're cutting this piece out that we keep all of them. Okay. Now, for this one, we're going to line the ruler up on the edge. And if you wanted, you could also use the square, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. But I'm going to use the ruler because I want to use that 16th of an inch roadway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to one and a half inches. So that's the big middle line between one and two. And I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to go one sixteenth of an inch over. And I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'm going to make sure I'm zeroed out. And I'm going to go an inch and a half over. And I'm going to make a mark. And then one sixteenth of an inch over. I'm going to make another mark. So I went one and a half, and then I went one sixteenth over from there. I'm then going to go back with my square, once again making sure I have it nice and even. I'm going to draw a straight line straight across, slide it down to that mark I made a sixteenth inch below it, draw a straight line straight across. Now if I wanted I could go ahead and kind of split those two. And once again, I could take my green colored pencil and I could color in that roadway if I wanted. So I would cut straight down that green line when I go to cut it out. Like I said, you could use whatever color you want. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I was an inch and a half down. I draw that straight line. One sixteenth of an inch down from there. I draw that straight line. Once again, if I wanted, I could slide it up so it's sitting right on top of that line. And I could draw and color in that roadway. So when I look, I got a green road here and I got a green road here. Your road might be a different color if you chose a different colored pencil. But I'm an inch and a half in, my big piece. So if you look, right now you can see there's that piece right here. That's this piece. These two little inside pieces right here is this one and this one. So we're going to come back to these and we're going to mark them where we sand, where we don't sand in a minute. But we need to do the exact same thing to this piece. So I'm going to take my ruler. Once again, I'm going to make sure it's zeroed. I'm going to come down one and a half inches, make a mark. One mark below that, a sixteenth of an inch down, I'm going to mark it. I'm going to flip it over, do the same thing down from the other side. Zero it over on the edge, one and a half inches. One line down from one and a half inches. I'm going to take my square, making sure I'm flush against this edge. And like I said, it's a lot easier when you're flat on a table, but I'm showing you guys on the camera. And I'm going to draw that straight across. Slide it down to that next mark. Draw it straight across. Move it right up on there if I want to draw my roadway in. And like I said, if you want to leave that roadway blank, you can. I'm just coloring in so hopefully it shows a little better on the video. But I go ahead, I do the same thing on the other side, flush against the edge, bring it up to my line, draw it straight across, slide it down a sixteenth of an inch, draw it straight across. If I want to color that roadway in, move it up so it's right on the line, color that roadway in. So. I have, once again, that bottom piece right here. Now I have this piece right here, and I got one for the other side. So when we're looking at this, and we see about how we need to make this, you're going to choose one of these sides is going to look nicer than the other. All right? This one's a little cleaner, so I'm going to make that my top. This is going to be my bottom. So what you're going to write down here is no sand. Because that means we're not going to sand this bottom. Okay? So there's no sanding on this side. The other thing I could do if I, is I'm going to come down that roadway and I'm going to draw a straight line just so I can see that this is the other piece. Okay? So right here I got no sand, no sand. I'm going to do the same thing on this little piece right here. I'm going to say no sand. Right? Or I'm just going to write no because that's all I got room for, right? And then I'm going to write no on this one. 
So I got no sand, no, no means no sanding. Because those are going to get glued right here, right here, and right here. Now, everything else on this little piece is pretty visible, so we're going to sand the rest of that, except for the top where this piece gets glued on. So I got no, no, no sand, and then on top, no, and no. Once again, your instructor's not going to let you cut this out till so I see that this piece has, this bigger piece has no, no sand on the bottom, no, and then the top, no, and no, just on the edges, because we're going to see this part. And you don't want to sit right on there, or it's going to take you longer to clean that out. But this one would be ready to go. Technically, we're going to glue on the front here, but you'd really have to sand really badly and weirdly to mess that up, so I'm not too worried about it. So we need to do the same thing on this one. We need to mark it where do we want to sand and not want to sand. So once again, one side is going to be seen. One side is going to get glued to the top of these pieces. So I'm going to go ahead, and I want to be careful because you'll notice I can see this bottom piece, right? So I'm going to end up sanding this middle all the way around. I'm going to be sanding the middle everywhere but where it gets glued onto these two little leftover pieces. So it's a little trickier than that one was as far as where to sand, where not to sand. If you look, these are getting laid in right here going along the back like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to write no, no, and no. Right? So we're going to sand this little top edge, this little outside edge, and then when we cut, we're going to sand that other side. But there's a lot of this little block that doesn't get sanded because we want to leave it as straight and as even for gluing those together as possible. So once again, I got no, no, and no. Right? So I got no, no, and no. Yes yes and yes is going to get sanded on the top. Now, this is where it's a little trickier, like I said. Technically, this piece is going to get glued right down here. Right? So when I'm looking, and I know it's a little confusing, I got this big piece, which is this big piece right here. Right? So technically, when I lay this on here, I'm going to have a little spot that doesn't get sanded on this one. So on the same side that I wrote no here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up those two little lines. So it now looks like one cut, right? And what that allows me to do is it allows me to draw a straight line down here, which is where this block is eventually going to get glued to. Right? It's going to get glued on top of that piece like this. So right down here where it's going to get glued, once again I want to write the word no. If you want, you could make a straight little line that represents those are two separate pieces. Right? I'm not cutting this, because that's my cut. I'm just marking where it's getting glued. I would then do the same thing on the other side. Line up those lines, right? So it looks like one straight line. Take my pencil, make a mark. If I wanted, I could make a little mark here just representing that. But then I'm going to write the word no right here. I'm only going to worry about this little piece and it's probably not going to need to be sanded but maybe a teeny tiny bit because all you're going to see out of that right? make sure I do have that one marked right, is this little tiny section that's in the middle right? that's just enough width for our cord to fit through and charge our device but you'll notice I see this edge, I see this edge, I see everything else, so I'm going to clean the rest of this up. So just where I mark no, so all the other three sides and then the two ends are going to get, end up getting sanded. But this is what I need to see on these two pieces and on this piece before I'll let you go drill, followed by doing all of your cuts and then sanding. So you have Marking the face, the base, and then what would be our holders. All right. So I'm now ready to drill, followed by cutting and sanding, which your instructor will have other videos to demonstrate that.